Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Delver. I know it's been a really long time since we've done one of these. Um, I've been dealing with New Year's uh, mental health struggles and this move that we've just accomplished here uh, at home. So I'm excited to get back into this kind of thing and talk about some of the impactful news surrounding Magic the Gathering and all of the other things that we love about this hobby. Um, I've seen a ton of support on YouTube with the minimal uploading we've been doing uh, for the last little while, and I can't express how much I appreciate that so, so much. Um, I've had to kind of fiddle around with my setup. I'm still not loving maybe this camera angle is a little low. I need to get something a little higher, um, but I think it's going to work for now, and I appreciate anyone who takes the time to watch these videos. Please leave a, a comment if you have any questions or want to see different types of content in these Delver episodes. Um, and as always, we appreciate the subscribers. Um, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, it's really helping us grow and, and get noticed. If you're in Vancouver, uh, this weekend, definitely try to find me and say hello. I'm looking forward to meeting a whole bunch of people at the face-to-face -to -face tour stop here in Vancouver, uh, March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, I'm going to be participating in the Pioneer Qualifier on Friday and then hopefully playing some, some random pickup games. Uh, and there's a couple of artists that are coming to the show that I want to get some signatures from. So definitely stop by and say hello if you can. Uh, while I'm there, I'm thinking of bringing a pocket full of just random rares uh, and mythics from my bulk, and I might just hand those out to anyone that shows me that they're a subscriber on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to the channel, find me in Vancouver at the Face to Face Tour, show me that you've subscribed, and I'll give you a random rare or mythic. Without further ado, um, I'd love to plug our latest episode of Booster Juice, where we open up a one of the fancy complete bundles. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but let's jump into some news. So the latest arena update is is pretty uh, boring. We're at this kind of stalemate between sets right now. Um, there's a pre-order for Shadows over Innistrad up. If you're interested in getting some of those anthology cards, um, bolstering your historic and explorer play definitely pick that up it comes with three draft tokens which is really nice i believe it's only 29 dollars in um usd so not too bad you get 10 packs um some card styles and three draft tokens which is a pretty decent deal uh there's some pretty epic and highly played uh, pioneer and modern cards in Shadows over Innistrad. So very excited to finally get to play um, with the Shark Typhoon. Um, not the Shark Typhoon, the Thing in the Ice. Shark Typhoon's already in there. Thing in the Ice is one of my favorite cards, and it's finally coming to Arena. Uh, Arena Qualifier Weekend is this weekend. So if you have a uh, play-in points or you've qualified, definitely check that out. And then championship two is near a total prize pool of 200,000 and arena players will converge on March 18th to 19th which is where when um, a bunch of local qualifier events are happening at LGS is around Vancouver so I will not be participating in the arena championship or trying to qualify for that um, the next little bit is that the hot pockets uh, Magic the Gathering crossover has finally been revealed. People have been seeing these out in the wild and they hadn't really talked about what was in them. So basically you get codes for Arena that unlock subsequent rewards depending on how many boxes of Hot Pockets you buy. Uh, this is only in the United States. So if you're one of our uh, Canadian listeners, you'll have to jump over the border um, legally. Um, there's no point in breaking into a country for Hot Pockets uh, or get someone to send you some stuff. Um, so this is what you get. For the first code, you um, 
redeem, you get the Vivian Hunt's pre-constructed deck, which is uh, shown here. And then the second code, you get a new Vivian on the Hunt avatar, which is right here. It's a pretty nice looking avatar. Uh, third code is Arc Bow Ranger Sleeve, which is this guy right there. And then fourth code, you get 2000 XP mastery bonus points. And then fifth code, the same thing, 2000 more XP mastery pass bonus. Um, yeah, you have to redeem all five codes by July 30th. Definitely check it out if you like Hot Pockets or just want the exclusive arena content. And then we've got the just standard updates for the schedule. And then this month's pet for March is Ebb and Death, which is kind of a boring one, to be honest. Um, I was really pleased that they put the puppet Jace back on the shop last month. Picked that one up. I'm still waiting for the Innistrad bat to come back. I want that pet so badly and I wasn't playing enough at the time to unlock it or buy the mastery. Um, big news out of Constructed is that there's a new banned and restricted announcement and Legacy was really the only thing that was hit. So Legacy uh, saw Expressive Iteration banned, which is a long time coming, I think. Uh, I don't play a lot of Legacy, but I hear a lot of positive feedback um about this banning i think most people th share the opinion that this card should just be banned in all formats it's still legal in a couple um but it is now banned in legacy and also white plume adventurer this is the um very cheap very strong um white initiative card and initiative is a big player in legacy and these two are basically the linchpin of the only two decks that are playable in legacy right now the whole format is dominated by two decks and this is watsi trying to curb the uh deck numbers for legacy you ban the two cards that these decks need and all of a sudden everyone has to figure out a different deck to play uh which is good um standard has no updates they talk about um meat hook massacre they're liking the health of the format pioneer uh coming off of the pro tour phyrexia pioneer uh had a very vibrant um diversity in the deck uh list that showed up at that tournament so i think that they're fairly happy with the diversity of pioneer and the same thing goes with modern even though you know, modern is a little bit more difficult to get into and a lot harder to play um, unless you have, you know, all of the fetches and, and whatnot. Uh, the vintage thing also gets hit by the mono white initiative stuff, um, but there's no banning right now because vintage has a little bit more answers for white plume adventurer. I think this is interesting because obviously they're focusing on pioneer for stand or for competitive this year and updating the health of all of the formats as we go along, as we see bans and um, restricted announcements, it's going to continuously change. So let me know in the comments below what you think of these bannings. Is there anything that they missed? Should anything else be banned? I saw a bunch of people on Twitter talking about Brainstorm being on that list. Um, and I don't disagree with it. Um, yeah, and that's, that's about it for official news. And then we jump over to the Magic the Gathering Twitter channel where they posted this um, yesterday. And this was very very good news so they finally announced information about um magic con minneapolis magic con philadelphia last month uh, was a huge success and everyone talked about how it was a great upgrade from the magic 30 event in vegas last year there was lots of little tweaks that they made to make the experience a whole lot better, but there was still some things that people were criticizing and think that Wizards of the Coast could upgrade or adapt uh, for future events. And it looks like there's um, some immediate 
listening going on with uh, Wizards of the Coast and how they've planned Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Um, the biggest one being uh, cheaper single day badges and command zone for all. So one of the biggest things that was a complaint in from the last event was that the command zone was a taped off section that you could only go play in if you bought an upgrade to your pass or the command zone pass itself, which was all pretty expensive. What this ended up doing was making the command zone pretty much a deserted island. Nobody wanted to go in there, even if they had the pass, because nobody was in there playing, and there were so many free tables outside of the command zone taped off area uh, that people were just finding tables to play outside of command zone. So even if they had access, they weren't using it because there wasn't enough people who had access and were hanging out in there. Apparently, it was a good way to, you know, ensure that you met some of your favorite content creators, especially the commander focused ones. But making command zone available for everybody is pretty great because they can still have a taped off area for, to say like, hey, play commander in here. But the fact that everyone has access to it means that that's where everyone's going to go to play commander because that's where they know they're going to find some games. Um, they've also updated the fan panels and the cosplay contest to upgrade again um and that's about it so they've got a list of special guests uh, a list of fan panels they've got submission forms for um minority content creators and the like to sign up and get uh, financial assistance to attend the event um, but the event runs from may 5th to the 7th in minneapolis so if you're interested in checking out uh, PT Machine, which is going to be the Pro Tour for the next uh, full set, um, March of the Machines. Definitely check it out. And again, thank you so much for everyone that has been watching uh, the videos on the YouTube channel. Uh, we've been doing daily shorts on YouTube, and they've been really fun to just like randomly pick a card out of my binders or out of my boxes. Um, and show it off and get people talking about it. I think it's it's been a lot of fun for me to, to do. And yeah, definitely if you're in um if you're in Vancouver, let me just pull up um if you're in Vancouver this weekend, it is the face to face tour stop. Uh, we're just a few days away. There's some pretty cool, um, some pretty cool artists coming. There's some pretty cool content creators coming. Uh, I will be there. If you're a subscriber to our, our YouTube channel, say hi. Find me on the show floor. Say hello. Show me on your phone or whatever that you've subscribed to the YouTube channel, and I'll let you pick a random, rare, or mythic um, from a pile and that'll be my thank you and i look forward to meeting everybody um to playing some games i'm gonna try to qualify uh for sunday's tournament on friday um yeah i hope to see you there and again thank you so much for watching these videos if you haven't subscribed yet please do so the numbers going up uh really helps us out and throwing a like and uh a comment on there too also helps with the algorithm uh, and let me know what you think of these little video news blurbs i want to keep doing them but i also want to be making content that's useful and helpful to people so there's some stuff i've got in the works uh, um, that i can't talk about quite yet but i'm very excited for the future and i want to keep doing this stuff so thank you again so much uh, for hanging out with me here uh, my pace. Thank you for being patient uh, as we move and I deal with uh, personal health issues. I can't thank you guys enough and definitely reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever uh, to say hi. Um, I always need more cool people in my circle that play this awesome game and I will talk to you uh, soon. I hope all of your opening hands are keeps and I hope all of your opponents mulligan. I hope you see cute puppies, and I hope that you are kind to yourself. Uh, make sure you say something nice to yourself in the mirror. 
next time you lock eyes.